Hello friends, the hypertext model represents all kinds of navigation possibilities based on the content. The non-linearity of hypertext is one of the most important properties to be taken into account when modeling web applications. Hello and welcome to our channel Pullas Kumar Gokhale for learning. The topic for today is modeling web applications part 3, hypertext modeling. Today we will discuss the hypertext modeling in details. Let us start with the agenda. First, we'll study the objectives. Then we'll discuss the hypertext structure modeling concept. Then we'll take an example of reviewing systems for studying the hypertext structure model of the program chair. Then we'll discuss the access modeling concept. Then we'll discuss the access structure index. Then we'll discuss the menu and other access structures. Then we'll study the simplified access model of the hypertext structure model and lastly we we'll study the relation to the content model. So let us start with the objectives. The objective of hypertext modeling is to specify navigability through the content of the web application. So hypertext modeling is also called as the navigation modeling. So here the navigation paths which are available to the user they are specified. Then the hypertext modeling generates two fold result. First, it produces the hypertext structure model, also known as the navigation structure model, which defines the structure of the hypertext. So, which classes of the content model can be visited by navigation? So, that is defined by the navigation structure or the hyperstructure model. Then, second, it refines the hypertext structure model by access elements in the form of access model. So, the model which we do as the hypertext structure model, it will be refined with the help of access element. So, hypertext modeling focuses on the structural aspect of the hypertext and the access elements. Let us go to the hypertext structure modeling concept. Hypertext structure modeling is based on the concept of hypertext, that is, on nodes. So, these are also called as the pages or documents in the web application and links between these nodes. So that is what is the hypertext structure modeling. Then the starting point used for creation of the hypertext structure model is usually the content model which contains the classes and objects to be made available as the nodes in the hypertext. So we start our modeling with the help of the content model and the content model it will have the classes and objects that will be available as nodes in the hypertext. Then often the hypertext structure model is specified as a view on the content model and is therefore sometimes called as the navigational view. So we call it as the navigational. So thereby a node is specified as a view on the content model selecting one or more objects from the content. So that is the point from where we can have the navigation. Then let us go to the hypertext structure model. Continue with that. We can create various hypertext structure models that define hypertext views on the content. So here number of structure models can be created. For example, if we take into account the access rights of different users for the hypertext structure modeling, we can obtain the personalized hypertext views. So here we have taken one example that is a reviewing system. That is the paper reviewing system, research paper review system. So here the hypertext views are required for the following user roles. That is author, reviewer and the program chair. So we have shown the hypertext structure model in figure 1. Let us see what it is. So here you can see having the classes that is the navigation class, conference, paper, review and user. There are four navigation classes and the links to these classes will be the navigation link. So here we will have navigation link from conference to the paper class to accepted papers, rejected papers. So these two links will be there. And similarly we will have another link to the user class that is for the user. And then user will have links with the class paper that is for the authors and uh, the review will have links for the review so there will be navigation link for the reviews and 
whatever paper are accepted they will be again put into the class paper so in this way links are modeled by directed association with the stereotype that is navigation link so here we'll be having the navigation link as the stereotype for the link and navigation class as the stereotype for the classes then let us go to the next that is access modeling concept now the hypertext structure model built so far alone is not sufficient to describe how nodes can be reached by the navigation so to allow users to navigate to nodes the user need navigation and orientation aids so here we'll add this orientation and navigation aids so that the user can navigate easily these are formulated in the form of access structures defining the hypertext structure model so recurring access structures are described as design patterns also called as the hypermedia design pattern or they are also called as the navigation pattern the use of these navigation patterns helps to increase the quality of the hypertext model tremendously so we are refining or elaborating the hypertext model with the help of this navigation patterns next access structure index in our reviewing system example if one wants to navigate from a reviewer to a paper assigned to this reviewer one will have to identify this specific paper during navigation so we have to identify the specific paper during the navigation so here we can do it with the help of the form of a list showing all paper so from the list we can select particular paper such a selection for navigational support is also called as the index and an index is an access structure which allows users to select a single object out of a homogeneous list of objects so if we have a list of papers then we can select one paper from that so one object of the content that is nothing but the paper will be selected from a list of papers then let us go to the next that is menu and other access structure so a menu allows users to access heterogeneous nodes or further menus that is sub menus so we can have hierarchy of menus then other access structures are guided tour and the query so what is guided tour a guided tour allows users to sequentially walk through a number of nodes so you might have seen this is present in many of the web applications so it will allow us to walk through number of nodes then a query allows users to search for nodes so when you want particular atom we can search that atom with the help of the query then let us go to the next that is simplified access model of the hypertext structure model so here again we have the same example of reviewing system so here we have four classes they are shown with the navigation class conference this is the first navigation class then we have the navigation class paper and then we have the navigation class review and lastly we have the navigation class user so these are the four classes and then we have the menus conference menu then paper menu again here we have the paper menu then we have different indexes so indexes are many indexes are here so here accepted paper then rejected papers then review status reviews then we have the authors index then assigned paper papers by id then user index so these are the index which are used for the navigation then the pc chair for which we have made this hypertext structure model has access to all papers reviews and users that's why everything is shown here and the pc chair can search for a paper by title and also they can give uh, say query search paper by title with the help of that they can search and you can also use make use of the menus and sub menus for searching the paper so this is how the access model will be used the next we have the relation to the content model so depending on the underlying modeling method the hypertext model is more or less strongly dependent on the content model so as per the content the hypertext model has to be modeled 
so there exist both dependence at the type level so for example which classes in the content model form which node in the hypertext model so that is at the type level and then at the instant level that is which sets of the object in the content model populate that node in the hypertext model so that is at the instance level then not all the methods describe dependencies between the content model and the hypertext model exactly so here some methods specify a direct derivation of the hypertext from the content by defining nodes on the basis of the views so here views we mean in the sense of the database views so depending on the database views we can define the different nodes so with this we come to the end of this video if you have any queries you can contact me on facebook twitter gmail or instagram then if you like the video press the like button share with your friends and subscribe to our channel ullas kumar gokhale for learning then don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notifications for our future videos on this subject web engineering then thanks for watching have a nice day